Seamus Coleman is with us on the line. The Republic of Ireland and Everton captain today launched Spar's Better Choices Summer 2021 campaign, bringing healthier food and refreshment options into homes, gardens and parks for all the family to enjoy this summer. Spar has also created a specially curated online hub at spar.ie forward slash better choices, providing customers with delicious recipes and suggested shopping lists to make planning for staycations, barbecues and match nights in simple, healthy and tasty. Available now in more than 400 Spar stores across Ireland, Spar Better Choices products are easily identifiable by the green sticker. Seamus, good morning. Good morning. How are you getting on? I'm very good, thank you. The Rafa Benitez news, uh, wh where does that register for you? Are you delighted and excited about what the season now brings? Yeah, listen, it's been a, it's been a interesting summer in terms of, uh, you know, losing, losing the manager. And then, um, you know, there's been a few weeks while we've waited for the news on the new manager. And I know, obviously, I've been around the club long enough to know and um, I'm aware of supporters who know of the manager's history, but uh, I think now as a group, uh, as a group of players, as a group of supporters, uh, staff members, I think ultimately we want what's best for Everton and uh, to get what's best for Everton, we all need to come together now and, and look forward to the new season. And, you know, unfortunately, I've probably been having these talks too many times recently because um, I think as a club, the manager, the manager situation has been changing a lot, and uh, that's probably never a good, never a good sign. We've lost some managers along the way, which has been disappointing. But I think now, um, as a group, as supporters and players and uh, staff members, we need to all come together and and be as positive as possible, and 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 hope for a positive season because there's been kind of too many seasons that have just kind of dwindled out, and and uh, we need to get that right. Yeah, how big a factor is that, the, the history that you mentioned there of Rafa Benitez being a, a former Liverpool manager previously to describing Everton as a, as a small club? How, how important is that to, to get out in front of that at the very start and to, to show that everybody's on side? Well, ultimately, you've got to understand, um, you know, big Everton supporters and that rivalry between Everton and Liverpool. But on the other hand, um, you know, the decision is made. We... Um, the, the manager has, has managed Liverpool, but in the meantime, he's been on to manage a lot of different clubs in between. And uh, as players and staff, um, we need and want what's best for Everton Football Club. And um, as I touched on, there's been too many seasons that have just dwindled out, which has been disappointing. And, you know, that's on me and a lot of the players, me as captain the last couple of years, to, to watch seasons dwindle out has been a massive disappointment. But now... You know we're we're ready to go again. We all have to come back. We all have to come back and impress a new manager and um, and make sure that we're in his plans come pre-season and come the start of the new season as well. Because um, ultimately, like I keep talking about, but I'm not embarrassed to say it. We want what's best for Everton Football Club. We want to be successful, Everton Football Club. And I'm sure fans are sick hearing me saying it, but I'll keep saying it until the day I kicked my last ball for Everton Football Club. We want to win a trophy at that football club and uh, this is a new start for us all again and a new opportunity and, and the manager has come to be successful as well. He's come to work for Everton Football Club, be part of the Everton family and, um, and give his all because he'll ultimately want to be as successful as he can as well. So as a group, we all need to, to look forward and, and be as positive as we can. Is there a new deal on the cards on the table for you soon? Is there what, sorry? Is, is there a new deal on the table for you soon, Seamus? Uh, I've been talking, yeah, I've been talking to the club um, over the last little while. And um, yeah, listen, I, I'm, in, I'm in no panic. I'm uh, not knocking down any doors to, to sign any deals. And I mean that in the, in the, in the best mm. possible way. With respect to Everton, I, I come in and I'm really happy there and uh, work hard like I do, like I did from when I came over as a 20 year old. Nothing's changed. and. Uh, you know, I want to get every last ounce um, of energy that I have left in me and, and play as long as I possibly can. And uh, we'll see where that brings. But yeah, I've been, been speaking to the club and, and we'll see where we go from there. And uh, ultimately, I just want to go back. I'm only thinking of pre-season, really, going back and working as hard as I possibly can and, and trying to impress and make sure I'm in and around the plans come next season. Is it true that there might be a, like a coaching element to your next deal? I, I saw that touted by by people in the hierarchy at the club 
Well, listen, there's, uh, I think people are aware that I'm doing my coaching badges at the minute and I don't want to be a player that finishes playing football and kind of doesn't know what's next. I think it's important as a as a footballer that you keep developing even more so as you get older in your career. And I know you have David Myler in there with he's doing media work and things like that. I think it is important that the players have a plan for after football. You know, I am doing my badges. It's something that um, I don't find a chore doing. This is something that I really enjoy. And um, wherever that brings me in the future, we'll see. But um, I don't expect just because I've played for Everton for 10, 12 years that uh, I should walk into a job at that football club. I think in life you've got to earn things. And just because I've played uh, at a high level for Everton as a player doesn't mean I deserve to go in there as a coach. So ultimately we'll see how good I am as, as time goes on and, and see where that takes me. But yeah, it's something that I'm definitely interested in. And Seamus, is that coaching or management? Because obviously they're, they've are they become very, very different things over the last, well, even since you would have noticed the change, that there's a lot of managers who are on the, the uh, coaching field every day and there are managers who are sitting back and kind of almost CEOs in, in, in one respect. Which, which side of that appeals to you more? Um, I think I think for me, I think yeah, you do have to tie a bit of both of them together, really. I think it is important that you're on the training ground and and get involved on the day on a daily basis but ultimately yeah, i'd like to i'd like to see myself as a as a manager i suppose and i think it's not like being a captain but as a captain you do have to worry about you know not just yourself but everyone else but um i think there's similarities there obviously being a manager it's a lot more time consuming but uh, i think there's similar similarities there and it's something that we'll wait and see it's something that i at this moment in time i think i would like to do and again, I'll touch on it's not something that uh, just because you played at a decent level that uh, you can walk into and, and deserve it. You've got to start, start on the ground floor and work your way up and then we'll see where that brings me. Maybe I'll not be good enough, but I'll give it my best opportunity when that time comes. But on the other hand, I'm, I'm 32, I'm not 36, so um, we'll, yeah. we'll, see how we, we'll see how we go. We're not writing you off yet. Yeah. <laughs> no. Not this time. And because is, is this a new thing, Seamus, or is it kind of over the last couple of years, do you think, where the, the penny has dropped that this is what you want to do? Um, no, I, I, I done my, I done my coaching badges there. I started my B license um, a couple of years ago. Um, listen, I've always, I've always loved football. It's, it's all I, it's all I know really. I um, played it for so long and, you know, watch games on the TV, kind of started to notice I was taking an interest in what managers were doing. I was speaking to people around the club about why why would we be doing this and why would we be doing that? Just out of, out of curiosity, you know, why that train drill and this train drill? Just, you know, a bit of a football geek, really. And um, as the years have went on, yeah, I've, I've, I've applied for my A licence and I'm, I'm nearly finished that now as well. So it's something just, I think, as time went on, I've realised it's something that I would maybe maybe like to do. and. You know, I do have a have a serious longing for home as well. I do, you know, when I come home to Ireland in the summer, I do love being around Pilly Beggs. I do love being around my family. So, you know, I'm doing it now, but, you know, I don't know what the future holds as well. When it comes to that sort of element of things, Seamus, when, you, when you're kind of trying to feel your way around on that front, are you having conversations with managers at Everton? Do, do, do you talk to Carlo last season, for example, and, and say, listen, I'm doing my badges, and are you, are you trying to, to glean things off some of the great coaches you've worked under? Yeah, listen, you just you, you, you build relationships with these managers, and, you know, just whether it be time on the training ground or upstairs in the canteen after, you know, you try and, you know, learn from their experiences, ask, ask them questions. Sometimes they come to you and, and talk about their experiences, their 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 thoughts on management, how, how their careers have went. And, you know, I'm all ears. I'm, I'm eager to listen, eager to learn. And um, I talk a lot here, like, uh, about the next step. But ultimately, I'm as hungry as I've ever been to be a football player. And, um, you know, I keep I come in every day as hungry and as eager as I did when I was 20 years of age and trying to impress the manager like I was still a 20-year-old kid because I think at my level, you've got to prove yourself every day and nothing's nothing's a given so listen we're talking here about the next stage but ultimately I'm still in the moment and still loving being a footballer and I want to give that as much as I possibly can but with an eye on the next stage because I think you'd be very naive not to um, be planning for life after football because 
I think you see a lot of people after football, they have no plan and it can be a tough time for them. So I just want to be as best prepared for, for whatever comes next. Have you been watching much of the Euros? I've been watching it. Um, you know, I've, I've tried this summer to, you know, I've got my three kids back home with me and, and my wife and, you know, our house is between my parents and my wife's parents and we've been spending a lot of time just driving up and down the road with kids that are wanting to go different places all the time. So a lot of my summer has been spent with the kids and, and, and kind of fulfilling their needs and, you know, sitting and watching three different games a day. But I've been trying to watch the, the games that I wanted to watch. and um, But ultimately this summer has been kind of been about switching off really from from the season just gone and spending as much time with the family as possible, really. So, so you're like spending a good bit of time at home and actually reconnecting with home over the course of the summer then? Yeah, I've been home. I've been home since uh, since we left International. Well, I left a few days early since we left International Camp. I've been back in Killy Beggs, back in Donegal, and yeah, just catching up with with friends and family. I've done my five-day test and release. I need to make sure I get that as well because we, we do all need to make sure that we're still sticking to whatever um, guidelines are in place. So I made sure I've done my five days test and release and um, yeah, just been with friends and family and, and really enjoying it. Is that something you think about in, during the season, Seamus, or is it, is it only really when the season ends and you got a bit of time to think about it, about going home, I mean? Like, is it something that you, you, you do constantly miss? Because you've mentioned it a few times and there's clearly a really deep, strong connection between yourself and your home place. Ah, oh, yeah, there's a very strong bond between myself and, and home. It's where I grew up. It's where my family are. It's where my friends still are. And, um, you know, luckily in England, I've got my wife and my kids and, and football. And that's what I say. My life is, is very simple. It's uh, my first football second. And there's not much after that, really. That's that's my life summed up in two. So, um, yeah, listen, coming home is, is important to me. Uh, I think especially after um, the 18 months, maybe, that we've all we've all had. Um, not just not just me, people all around the world. It's been a tough time for everyone, but yeah, you know, it's been 12 months since I was home last, so you do cherish every minute, and, and, and I think it's important to enjoy getting home. It's, it's where I grew up, and it's something that I really enjoy. When it comes to some of those matches you're watching in the Euros, then, are, is there a strange emotion to it in, in some way, Seamus? Are you, are you thinking, I wish I was there, or are you thinking, I'm just watching a football match here and I'd remove myself from it? Um, no, you'd be, you'd be, yeah, you'd definitely be thinking, I wish you were there, and you'd be having memories of, of um, you know, Ireland, Italy, that thing, you know, that big moment we had in, in, in France. But, yeah, listen, I'm sure there's other players in other countries uh, across Europe that are feeling the same thing, and, yeah, we wish we were there. I'm sure all the players wish we were there but it wasn't to be and again that's the ups and downs of football it wasn't to be and then um, now i sit back now and, and enjoy maybe the last few games from the quarterfinals on but yeah, it definitely has that sense of wishing we were there you're in a great position to tell us then Seamus is football coming home <laughs> you're not getting any headlines off me <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't really... know. They, they 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 done really well england done really well in the game against them um, in the game against germany i thought and um, I thought maybe people uh, had an opinion that they were set up defensively because they changed to the three at the back and with the wing backs. But I watched the game. I thought they were solid, and um, you know, I thought I think Jordan Pickford, you know, who you know has his criticism from from play, from people. I think everyone needs to hold their hands up and and appreciate how well he's done for England this summer. I think he's been I think he's been fantastic for them, and you know, as a club as a club mate, it's it's been good to see. So. Um, it's going to be it's going to be an interesting end. England have got, um, I suppose, a favourable side of the draw. But me being a professional football player and knowing the ups and downs of football, England won't be thinking that they know that football is a, is a tough sport and anyone on their day can can upset you. So I'm sure they'll be fully prepared. But I thought Italy have been very good as well. I'm sure they've impressed a lot of people. So it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. But uh, England have, have impressed so far. Four games with no goals conceded. Tell us about Raheem Sterling and why he's had such a good tournament. You've obviously come up against him. What is what is it about his skill set that makes him able to explode into games the way he's been doing over the course of this tournament? I think I think you know I've played against him numerous times. He's he, he's fast. He's tricky. He's 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 stronger than probably people would expect when they see the size of him. He's, he's extremely strong, and um, I think he's you know for. I, I don't know anything about his 
Sterling in terms of what he's like as a person, but from the outside looking in, he looks like an extremely hungry footballer who, who, who really wants to succeed. And I think you can see that with the way he's played in the summer so far and, and how how determined he's looked. And he's been very important for England. But listen, he, he's a £50 million pound player from, from Liverpool. So he was always going to um, kick on. And I think with the manager at Man City, he's his game on, uh, I suppose, another level. And he's been fantastic for Manchester City and, and took that form on to England as well. Has that sort of player you've noticed changed down through the, the last 10 years or so, Seamus, where they like to play a little narrower or they're hugging the touchline just a little bit less? Is that something you've noticed? Ah, uh, yeah, listen, <clears throat> the game the game's changed a lot from maybe when I came over first. Um, you know, you had majority of the time a left-footed winger, you know, maybe hugging the touchline and you knew for the game that, yeah, you would have an overlapping fullback, but you usually had that winger and... And that was your concern. But yeah, now, especially I think when you play against the likes of Man City, it's very difficult to know where to be a to try and suck you in narrow inside so that there can be an overlap and fullback and overload areas with 3v2s and things like that. So um, the game has definitely changed a lot. I think managers and coaches have all got um, better. They've all got tactically better, which in turn makes it more difficult for the players that are playing to defend against these things. But Definitely seen a big change like that. And um, when I came over first, you, you knew who you had. You had left winger, and it was kind of UV him. What is now, it's changed a lot. It's uh, it's more complicated and more difficult. And players are getting, in my opinion, they're getting faster, stronger, probably better than than ever. And, and the game is definitely improving, getting tougher year on year. How have you adapted to that? <laughs> like there's no there's no no secret. Just um, work hard and. You know, for me, understand your weaknesses, understand what you need to improve on. Um, I think people will tell you that have worked with me, I've got no ego. If I'm weak at something, I'll try my best to work at it. But yeah, you've got to adapt or else, you know, you wouldn't have, me myself personally, I wouldn't have stayed at this level for as long as I have because you have to adapt because it's, the game's changing all the time and I'm not getting younger, I'm not getting faster or anything like that. So. I've had to adapt, but just through, um, I suppose, being a student of the game and, and having my homework done before games and, and working hard on a daily basis to make sure I can stay as fit as I possibly can. So no big massive secret to it, no big secret to my career so far. Hard work, determination, and, um, and that's it, really. It's interesting seeing Kyle Walker play so well on the right of a three for England. I know he's done it for a long time, but it was nothing new the other day. Uh, I presume from your standpoint looking at that, you're thinking to yourself, that's kind of the level you need to be at as a right back, where you can play on the right of a three, as a right wing back, on the right of a back four. Am I, am I right in saying that? Yeah, I think you need to be adaptable. I think the game's changing that much. Tactics are changing, you know, last year for Everton, I played right back and I played three international games, right, right of a three for Ireland, which I really enjoyed. I played some games going back to my early days under David Moyes. I played some games right midfield again, which I enjoyed as well. But I don't think I'll be making a career for myself right midfield <laughs> at 32 years of age. But yeah, you have to be adaptable. And and for me, listen, you're probably sick here and the type of character I am. But for me, team comes first. The manager asked me a few times to, to play advanced of a right back and, and an actual flat back four of a right midfield. But ultimately, I want to do what's best for the teams that I play for. And um, I think that's, that's so important that... Um, you're a team player. I know there's some individual players that can win a game themselves and we need to carry them types of players as well at times. But for me, I'm a team player and I think it's important to be that and that's what's kind of helped uh, give me the career I've, I've got as well. Just going back to Jordan Pickford, like, I mean, it is amazing how brilliant he's been during this summer. And I guess probably what you'll say is that the, the criticism of, of Pickford or or, or, or wherever that's coming from, has just been totally unfair throughout the season. Like you, you've seen up close how good he is in training. Has he been criticised too heavily in the past? I think I think Jordan knows, and we all know, has been for years. When you're England's number one, um, there's severe pressure. There's always uh, a media um, opinion on whoever's not the number one at the time or whoever's doing well or upcoming that's like, oh, they should be England's new number one. So... Jordan's had to show immense uh, strength to kind of get on with his job, don't listen to the noise. And um, I think I think he's done that extremely well. Um, but yeah, I think 
if anyone that's been watching Everton, especially the last few months of the season, would say that Jordan's been fantastic and he's got great quality with a ball at his feet. And I think we've seen in the Germany game, he's a great um, stopper as well. So he looks extremely focused at the minute. He's calm and um, I think he should be very happy with how his tournament's going so far. And um, as I said, when you're England's number one, when you are in that position, there'll always be someone um, wanting to get your position and there'll always be someone with an opinion that someone could do it better than you. So Jordan's been incredible with his character and with his performances to show people why he's England's number one and I think he's doing that. Were you watching Portugal the other night, taking notes on how to beat them in September? Um, sorry, was, uh, no, I didn't I didn't see um, any of the Portugal game the last night, but um, yeah, listen, before I go into any international game or any club game, I've got my homework done on on the opposition or especially the players that might be in my in my position um, that I might be up against if I do play. But yeah, it's, it's something that we have to prepare for. I thought the summer just gone was was positive in terms of you know results. Um, I know it's been a tough tough start for us, but then um, now it's been a, a positive uh, summer. I think we have got new players in the camp, which has been good and. Um, now we're um, we're we're looking forward to meeting up again in September, and as you know me at this stage, it's always a privilege. But on that green shirt, and that'll be something that I'll be looking forward to again. All right, well, Seamus, uh, enjoy the rest of the stint in Donegal, and uh, best of luck under Rafa and for the season ahead. Thanks very much.